You see, the, the press presents the Giorgio Meloni victory in Italy as a, a victory for the post-fascists and a defeat for the liberal establishment, or the illiberal establishment, as I call it. It's not. It's a major triumph of the liberal establishment. Because what they, what they has, have succeeded in doing, in, in doing, through their defeat, electoral defeat, is this. Uh, by the way, what is the liberal establishment? It's all these politicians in Italy who, since the, you know, the, the great financial collapse of 2008, have been steadfastly implementing in Italy a policy of socialism for the bankers and austerity for the people that has wrecked that country. Because, you know, Italy is not Greece. Greece was bankrupt, okay? Every, you know, we, for years we were, as a, as a people, as a private sector and a public sector, we were... Um, you know, had a current account deficit, you know, constantly every year that went by, uh, Greece borrowed more uh, in order to, to, to buy imports. Mm? Uh, we had a constant budget deficit that was in increasingly unfathomable. Italy was a success story. Italy was a country that exported more than it imported. It con you know, consistently had a current account surplus, a bit like China or Germany. Its government, whether it was corrupt or not, it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, since 2011, they've been running a budget surplus, a primary bud budget surplus. Uh, it's, it's an industrial country, at least the, the north part of it, um, that sells all over the world stuff. So, you know, it should be flying. And yet, because it was embedded in this European Union that was imposing policies that were coming from, emanating from Berlin and from... from uh, Frankfurt and from Brussels and Washington DC and so on, the country was wrecked. By whom? By the former communists that transformed themselves into the Partito Democratico, in the Democratic Party, by Berlusconi, by Renzi, the, the people who were around, you know, circling around the center and who were implementing policies that were faxed to them and then emailed to them later when email became <laughs> the thing uh, from Brussels. That was the center. Now, they created huge discontent to the extent that the good people of Italy tried everything. They even tried to, you know, they, they even voted for a stupid party called Five Star, uh, led by a comedian that had no program. They just, you know, they, they just wanted change. They were ready for even a, a revolution. And what happens in the end? In the end, Giorgio Meloni, after a period of... Um, you know, a, a, a systemic government by the head of the European Central Bank, who was previously, you know, the, the blue-eyed boy of Goldman Sachs, Mario Draghi. Now, after all this, what happens? Giorgio Meloni, the new fascist wins, but after having made a Faustian bargain with the liberal establishment. What was the Faustian bargain? First, no change in economic policy. They will continue to implement whatever comes from Brussels and... Uh, even Mario Draghi, the gentleman that I just mentioned, who is the outgoing prime minister, never been voted to be prime minister, but nevertheless, he was appointed by the system. Even he is now saying good things about Meloni because she has agreed to the agenda that he was implementing. And the, thing, the second thing that Meloni accepted as uh, given, even though it goes against her party's position, is complete compliance to the NATO uh, perpetuation of the war in Ukraine. So, in other words, the system, you know, the liberal establishment managed to channel all the discontent of the Italian public that it had created to electing somebody who is following its own policies. Uh, so, <laughs> and one last thing before I shut up, uh, Edge and Roger. Look, Almost everything changed about the fascists, except the essence. So the fascists today, like Meloni, they dress in, you know, in um, business suits. They don't wear brown shirts. They don't beat, they do not beat people up anymore. I mean, they do in Greece, but not in Italy. You know, there is nobody to beat up, up anymore, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, they do beat up uh, migrants and people that are browner than others. But nevertheless, you know, not more so than... Uh, and what happens in, in the streets of Birmingham or in the streets of Manchester. So they, they have the civilized uh, uh, appearance uh, and they implement standard, systemic, neoliberal 
establishment policies. However, the one thing which is absolutely essential to them is, and, and, and what they offer the, the system is, they manage, like Mussolini did in the 1920s, to do two things, to offer the many the promise that they will be looked after from the um, extre extreme effects of market capitalism. They said to them, we will look after you. And they did the deal. The deal. Mussolini was the first one in Western Europe to introduce old age pensions, to introduce unemployment benefits. So the, the Faustian deal with the people of the neo-fascists is, we will give you slightly higher minimum wage, pensions, we will look after you, we will not let you starve, on condition that you give up all your liberties. The right to organize tra in trade unions, the right to have an opinion, and as long as you uh, transfer to us the legitimacy to pursue a nationalist racist agenda. That was Mussolini then, that's Meloni now. And in the end, they capture the anger of the discontented, the, the victims of financialized capitalism in the 20, 1920s, those 19, the 1920s and the 2020s, they capture the, 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 the populace and then deliver them to capital in the form of you know, proletarians, precariat, and so on. That's what they did in the 1920s, that's what they do now. Um, it's, I, I think that what we now have is worse because they have been completely normalized. And by the way, there's nothing new here, and this is how I end. I remember because, you know, like you know, we, Roger, are older. Um, I remember in 1994, Silvio Berlusconi, remember that fuckwit? Yeah. Of course, I do remember as well, by the way. Right. But do you remember what he said about the fascists? He said he's creating a new right huh. which constitutionalizes, constitutionalizes, he invented the word, the League of Fascists. So he's bringing together the radical center and the fascists in one thing. And he started appointing, you know, fascists to, um, um, you, uh, you know, jobs of authority and normalize them, you know, cleanse them. So this is nothing new. The only thing that is different, instead of having Berlusconi, who was not a fascist himself, he was um, uh, legitimizing fascism. He was saying good things about Mussolini, but he was not, he was, he was not serious enough even to be a fascist. Um, uh, he was too much into parties and, uh, and borrowing money in order to build a fake empire, a bit like Trump. He was a Trump. Um, the, so he, he brought the fascists into government. Now the fascists are leading the government with Berlusconi in the government. No difference. A major triumph of the liberal establishment. And who is responsible for this? Who is the great culprit? Who is to blame? We, the left, again, our failures to organize, to have a proper internationalist agenda um, and, and to stop bickering with one another. I mean, back in 2019, folks, you don't know that, but I spent one year, one whole year, going up and down Italy, organizing, trying to organize a left unity ticket for the European Parliament elections. I lost the will to live. Maurizio would say to me that, what are you saying to me? Are you telling me that Fabio is going to be part of this coalition, but Fabio is talking to Tim, and I hate him. How can I be with Fabio in the same coalition? Okay? This is what happens.